Well, hello and welcome to Passion Church's online service. So glad you could join us today. I'm Norris Brazel, lead pastor for Passion Church here in Montgomery. And uh, today we're starting a brand new series all the month of November uh, entitled Christ the Healer. You know, God, uh, when He sent Jesus, He sent Jesus to do a, a full plan of redemption. That is man's spirit, his soul, and his body. And so we're going to be talking about healing for the whole man, but our emphasis is going to be on the healing of the body. Now, you know, think about this. How much would you pay to be cured of any sickness or any disease that might attack your body? I mean, what if you had a prepaid insurance policy that provided coverage for all pre-existing conditions? (laughs) You know, in today's world of human suffering and the rising costs of medical care, you know, what would such an offer be worth? You know, and what if it didn't matter, whatever your race, your sex, your ethnic background, your income or whatever, it didn't matter. Now, if this sounds too good to be true, if it sounds like it's out of this world, well, it is out of this world in its provision, but it is right here in the ugly now and now that God wants to meet that need of your life and of my life. And that is for us to discover that Christ is still the healer. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Isaiah chapter 53 the, the prophet here is, is prophesying about the suffering servant, which is Jesus Christ, and his redemptive uh, work uh, that would be accomplished some hundreds of years later. But here in verse 4, it says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Now, literally in the Hebrew, it says, He took up our sicknesses and carried our pains. You know, Jesus, we know this, that he bore all of our sins. The scriptures tell us that, that he was made to be sin for us, that, that we might be made righteous in him. We might be whole in our spirits. But the scriptures likewise show us and tell us that Jesus bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases and that by the stripes laid upon him, healing is provided for you and I. And I like to call this uh, the double cure. The, the double cure. God is healing for the whole man, healing for our spirit, when our sins are forgiven, when we're made brand new, when we're born again uh, by the Holy Spirit, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit regenerates us and makes us brand new on the inside. But also, Jesus has provided healing and wholeness from every sickness, from every disease, and from every pain. As I said, I like to call it the double cure. He's delivered us from sin, and He's delivered us from sickness. Now notice this, you can see this double cure in uh, a number of places. In James, the epistle of James, we can see it real clearly. We'll turn over there, James chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15. Notice what he says here. He says, uh, is anyone among you sick? Now he's talking to the church here. Let him call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. That's why I call this the double cure. He says here, writing to the church, that there should be healing by the prayer of faith, the anointing with oil in the prayer of faith. There is healing no matter what the sickness. There was no uh, pre-existing conditions here. There was no... Uh, caveat about, you know, if it's not too bad or if it's not this or if it's not that. He just said, if there's any sick, let them uh, call for the elders of the church. Let the prayer of faith be prayed and he will, uh, God will heal the sick. And not only that, even if he's committed sins, he will be forgiven. That's why I call it this, the double cure from sin and from sickness. And it's so important that we know that, that we understand that, that God in his mercy has provided for us, not only for our our spirit man, our inward man, but also for our outward man. You know, the Bible says that healing really is the down payment toward uh, the day when our bodies will be redeemed if uh, those that have already died and gone on, their bodies will be raised from the dead and made new like to Jesus. And we which are alive, we will be transformed in our bodies. We will have uh, brand new bodies just like uh, Jesus has now uh, in the resurrection. But right now, healing is the down payment for that. 
that just like uh, our redemption, uh, you know, has been paid for and we're experiencing the down payment of the Holy Spirit in our spirit, but one day we're going to have the fullness of it. Well, one day we're going to have a brand new body. But right now in this life that we're living right now, our bodies are not yet redeemed, but God has provided healing for our bodies. This is a great truth that really needs to, to be shouted from the rooftops uh, by the church. It is something that we neglect too often. We don't teach and preach about this enough that, that uh, Jesus has provided healing for our bodies. Now notice, He is the Father of mercies. The Father that we call Father, that is our Father for we who are believers, he is our Father, and the Bible calls him the Father of mercies. In 1 Corinthians, or rather, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, if you want to turn over there, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we're talking about Christ the healer. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul is speaking here, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of uh, compassion or mercies, the King James says, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our trouble. Now notice, he's the father of comfort. He's the father of mercies. God, our Father, looks upon you right where you're at. Maybe, maybe you're, you have a sickness in your body. Maybe there's a disease. Maybe you've gotten a bad report from the doctors. I want to encourage you, and, and, and even more than encourage you, I want to tell you and proclaim to you that Jesus is the healer. He's your healer. And that God, your Father, is the Father of mercies. That just as you would uh, if your child was sick, if your child uh, and you were able to make them better, then certainly you would. Jesus said, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those uh, that ask Him? And healing is one of those good things. He is the Father of mercies. And we see this double cure in the Father's provision again. In Psalm 103... If you have your Bibles, turn there to Psalm 103. <clears throat> Notice what he says here. David is speaking in verse 2. He says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now notice, who forgives all your sins. Now I know uh, I, all Christians believe that, 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 that when you put your faith in Jesus, that all your sins will be forgiven, that God will, will, will wash them in the blood, that as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us, and he will remember our sins and iniquities no more. We all believe that. You know why? Because we've heard it preached. We've heard it taught. We've heard it said over and over and over until faith has gotten strong in our spirits and strong in our lives so that we know that we know that we know that when we put our faith in Jesus, that we're saved. As Paul said, by grace, you're saved through faith and that not of yourself. It's the gift of God. So we know that benefit, that all our sins, iniquities are forgiven. They're removed and wiped out. God will remember them no more. But notice what he says. He says, in who heals all your diseases. Now, why is it that many Christians struggle with this latter part? It's because we've not preached it enough. We've not been teaching it enough. We've not emphasized it enough that Jesus is not only the one who redeems and forgives us of our sins and our iniquities, but he's also the God that heals all of our diseases. He heals all of our sicknesses. But what a wonderful truth this is to discover. Listen, tonight, Today, whenever you're listening to this message, uh, this morning, if you're listening on Sunday morning, listen, God has healing provided and available for you. It's already provided in Christ Jesus. And just like you received salvation, just like you received the forgiveness of sins by God's grace through your faith, you can also be healed of your sickness, of your disease by God's grace through your faith in the finished work of Jesus. So he is the father of all mercy. He is a father who cares. He is a father who has provided for us. Notice he goes on to say, who redeems your life from the pit. Listen, if you're suffering pain, if you're in pain uh, because you're of illness in your body, because of symptoms in your body and you, you're uncomfortable, you can't sleep. Listen, you feel like you're in a pit. You're in a pit. He says he wants to redeem your life from the pit and crown you with love and compassion who will dissatisfy your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God wants to renew and strengthen and heal your body. 
Paul said in Romans 8, verse 11, he said, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you as a believer, that, that same spirit, he will quicken, or that word quicken in the King James literally means to make alive, to make life in your body. He will also make life in your mortal body. God wants you well. I want to keep saying it and saying it. Listen, all this month, you listen. Don't miss one of these uh, uh, a pod, uh, one of these online services because uh, we're going to build faith in you from the Word of God based on God's Word that Jesus wants you well, that you can be healed. I don't care if you've been diagnosed with, with cancer, with uh, leukemia. It doesn't matter. We're going to see as we look through the Scriptures that Jesus is bigger than any sickness or disease that may be in your body. Now, let's look at the healing ministry of Jesus. Just a, a little overview today as we introduce this. The healing ministry of Jesus. Now, remember what Jesus told Philip. He said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So whatever we see uh, Jesus doing in the Gospels, whatever we see him doing there, then we, we know that was the will of the Father. Jesus went about, Acts 10, 38 says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. What was the good he did? Healing all those oppressed of the devil. Now notice we see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all involved in doing what? Lifting the oppression of sickness and disease off of the lives of people. Now here in Mark's gospel, we're going to look at this when Jesus healed a leper. In other words, Jesus is a, the healer even of skin disease. Notice in Mark chapter 1 and verse 40. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You know, there's a lot of Christians that are right where this man was. They believe that Jesus can heal, that he has the power of he to heal, but they're not sure if he's really willing to heal them. And once and for all, Jesus settled it. He settled it with this man, and he settled it with you and I, because God is no respecter of persons. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for anyone, he's willing to do for everyone. Now notice what it says here. It says, Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man saying, I'm willing. He said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Now notice this translation says Jesus was indignant. What was he indignant about? Not because the man had asked him. He was indignant because uh, the man didn't realize the compassion, the love of Jesus, the mercies of the Father. And he was uh, talking to Jesus and begging him as if Jesus had to be talked in to healing him. Maybe that's the way that you feel. Maybe that's your perspective today, that you feel like, you know, that somehow, you know, because you don't measure up, you're not the best person, you're not the best Christian, you don't have, you know, mountain-moving faith and all of that, that, that maybe Jesus doesn't want to heal you or won't heal you, but I got news for you. Listen, Jesus is willing to heal you. All you have to do is come and ask and receive. And we're going to talk about that more in these lessons. So he, he healed a, a leper. There were two blind men in Matthew 20. Let's turn over there. Think about this. Now he's healed a leper. Now a, two blind men. Now in Matthew uh, 20, verse 30, it says, uh, well, verse 29, as Jesus' disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them. Notice what he says here. He had compassion on them, and he'll have compassion on you and your suffering. He'll have compassion on you and your ailment and your sickness. He had compassion on them, touched their eyes. Immediately, they received their sight and followed him. Listen, uh, whatever it is, I mean, this, this was... Uh, uh, even t today with modern medical science, you know, these men could not have been helped. It took a miracle. It took the compassion of Jesus and the healing power that flowed out of him into these men that gave them their sight. 
gave them either brand new eyes or healed whatever was wrong with their optic nerve or their eyes or whatever it might be. But listen, God is a God of miracles. Our God is a God of power. He's the creator God. He's the redeemer. He's the father of mercies, and he wants you well. Now notice, he also is able to to deliver and heal people of mental illnesses. In Mark chapter 5, We're going to kind of cover the whole gambit today and an overview of Jesus' healing ministry. Uh, In verse 5, now we won't read all of this story about the demon-possessed man, but you can read the full story for yourself. But it it, it says that Jesus and them, you know, they went across the lake. They found a man who was uh, possessed. He was living in the tombs, and it says in verse 5, Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones, and, and no man could control him. And, you know, he shouted at the top of his lungs, you know, Jesus, Son of God, the Most High God. He said, "Uh, have you come to torture me? And Jesus said, come out of this man, you impure spirit. And then on down in about verse 15, uh, you know, you know, when the spirits came out and they went into the pigs and, and those who, who were watching the pigs, you know, after the pigs rushed down and were drowned, you know, in the lake, uh, then they went and brought others back. And when they came, verse 15, it says, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Notice this man had a legion, it says, of demons. A legion was 6,000. That's what was in a Roman legion was 6,000. That's a lot of demons. Maybe you feel like you're oppressed in your mind. Maybe you feel like you're, you're, maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're discouraged. Uh, maybe you can sense just a darkness around you. Listen, Jesus can set you free. He can bring and restore your mind. He can restore wholeness to your thinking, to your thoughts. He can, he can break the power of the devil over your emotions and bring joy and peace to you again. He is the healer, Christ the healer. And then just to wrap it up, as far as his healing ministry overview today, in Matthew 4, he healed, it says here, every kind of sickness. Matthew 4, 23, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Wow. Now, news about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him people who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, uh, demon-possessed, those having seizures, paralyzed, and he healed them. He healed them all. Wow. Nothing was too hard, and nothing is too hard for Jesus to heal. No matter what your case may be, maybe you're paralyzed. Maybe, maybe you, you've been diagnosed with incurable blood disease, whatever it might be. Listen, nothing is too hard for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the healer. He is anointed still to br- bring healing to you. He went to Calvary, and there at Calvary, he suffered And redemption's work, he shed his blood. He took upon himself your sickness and your disease so that you could be free from it. God wants you well. He wants you to be free from whatever uh, is attacking your body. And now, you know, the unchanging will of God. You know, some people will say, well, yeah, I know that Jesus did that when he was here on earth. He did that to prove that he was the son of God and that he had power over sickness and disease and the devil. But now, you know, now that Jesus has gone back to heaven, uh, you know, God doesn't do that anymore. He's given us medical doctors and medical science. Well, thank God for medical doctors and medical science. But if that's God's uh, way and substitute for Jesus healing everybody and medical science and doctors who cannot heal everybody, then we've got something that's a lot poorer than the the Christians and the believers did in Jesus' day. But let's look at that. Is that true? Is it true that somehow in the process of time, God's will has changed about things? I believe that He is an unchanging Savior and an unchanging God. Notice in Hebrews 13. Let's take a look over there. I can quote it, but it's good for us to read. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Notice what it says here about Jesus. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is an unchanging Savior. 
and his will is the same. He is an unchanging uh, Savior. If, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that means that whatever he did yesterday, he's doing today, and he will do tomorrow. That whatever we see him doing in the pages of the book, the Bible, the scriptures, then we know that it's, he's still the same Savior. He has the same compassion. He has the same love. We have the same Savior, the same blood sacrifice, the same high priest seated at the right hand of the Father. Everything is the same, and God wants you well. Jesus wants you well. It's an unchanging covenant that we have, an unchanging Savior, and an unchanging will in our Father God, and in the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants you well. Now let me share some action points, and then I want to pray for you today. You know, I would encourage you, in the course of of this series of studies in the month of November, look up the Scriptures that reveal God's healing provision and read through them slowly. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Read the Scriptures. Look them up. You, can, you know, if you've, if you've got uh, the Bible, you know, uh, uh, the Bible app, or you can uh, or load it, download it on your computer, or you can go old school and go in the Strong's Concordance, but there's many ways you can go and find free resources where you can do a, a scriptural Bible search, plug in the word heal, heal or healing there and they will pull them up you know and 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 begin to meditate and read over uh those scripture verses you know and begin to to see yourself well look at the healing ministry of jesus we just just i barely skipped the rock over the the lake the pond today tonight and today but look at the healing ministry of jesus to gain more understanding of his will and his mercy and desire to heal the sick And then just get along with God and talk to God about how does that apply in your life? How does the redemption of your body, how does that apply to you? How does these healing scriptures apply to you? Does God want you well? He absolutely does. He absolutely does. Just like He saved you, He will heal you. He is no respecter of persons. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be healed. I want to pray for you right now. If you've got pain in your body or, or there, you've been diagnosed with a sickness or disease, I want to pray for you right now. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And right where you're at, right where you're watching this, He can touch your body. He can make you whole just as He healed the blind man, the paralytic, the demon-possessed. Whatever may be wrong in your body right now, just believe with me in simple, childlike faith and receive Jesus as your healer and His healing power in your body today. Father, I pray for those who are listening, especially those who are sick, Father, in their body, a disease, a pain, a malady, an oppression on their mind. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray the prayer of faith right now as you commanded in James 5, 14, Lord. And I say in Jesus' name, be made whole. Command that pain and sickness to leave your body and that you now, will discover that Jesus Christ is the healer, the healer of your body. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, go back to the Scriptures. Read over them. You know, you say, well, you know, I I don't feel any different. Well, listen, the Bible says about uh, uh, another incidence where Jesus healed ten lepers. It says that as they went, they were healed. So as you go believing, reach out to God by getting into the Scriptures, finding what it says about it, meditating on it, and, and, you know, and just declaring over your life, listen, Jesus is my healer. These Scriptures are, these promises are for me. I am redeemed from sickness and disease because of Calvary. Well, I have to stop. My time is up. Thank you for joining me today. Make sure that you listen to all these uh, uh, series of messages this month because we're going to build on, on it, truth upon truth upon truth, and, and see uh, what the Scriptures clearly portray concerning Christ as healer.
You know, today uh, is the first Sunday of the month, of course, and uh, there on the screen you can see how uh, the, the different ways that you can give uh, online by texting, by using your credit card. But I want to remind you, especially the Passion Church family, that the first month is missions uh, Sunday for us here at Passion Church, and I want to thank you, all of you who have pledged uh, your missions pledge, faith promise pledge for missions uh, this last uh, year. Thank you for your faithfulness. By your giving, you're partnering together with people right now who are preaching the gospel in India and Pakistan and Africa. And not only that, but we're, we're helping to feed uh, hungry people here right in the river region, supporting the food bank. We're supporting uh, uh, ECHO, which is an after-school uh, ministry to our kids and and uh, helping the, them to, uh, uh, with the backpack program to send food home with them on the weekends. Uh, in so many different ways, your giving is helping to spread the gospel and change lives and to meet needs. And I want to thank you. And I want to remind you what uh, Paul wrote in Philippians to those who partner uh, with others for the gospel. He said, And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That is God's guarantee to you who are partnering together with us for the spread of the gospel and for lifting the, and meeting the needs of hurting humanity around the world. God bless you. Have a great week in God. And remember, by his stripes, you're healed.